recalls of all the big races. Welcome along to What a Shout, brought to you by the Racing Post and sponsored by Betfred. It is our weekly show that takes place every Friday. Plenty of action to uh, to be dissecting throughout, hopefully finding the winners of races from Newmarket, their feature group one, Ascot, and also the feature race of the year that takes place at Redcar 2. Alongside me in the studio to steer us in the direction of winners is Robbie. Mm. How are you? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, doing well, thanks, Emma. How are you? Good, good. Still no haircut. Not a surprise. Yeah, I'm learning haircut, need... that these things build up with you. Yeah, I think it's been um, something like 77 days really growing it out. But <laughs> and the beard I, too. Um, that is a trim. It does, yeah. I'll, I'll look like a completely different mm. fella next time you see me. I guarantee you that. Racing this time of year, how did you enjoy our yeah, weekend? Yeah, it was really fun, yeah. Uh, slightly lower key this weekend, but we've still got a group one. It seems like we've got at least one group one every every week. So a lot to look forward to still. Mm, yeah, and a, a group one at, um, at Newmarket on good ground as well. Yeah, it's going to be pretty quick out there. And Ascot as well, which we're not really used to seeing at this time of year. A lot of horses are probably not going to handle the conditions, you'd think. So hopefully find the ones who do. Mm. Well, also joining us to analyse uh, proceedings, it's uh, a warm welcome to Tom. How are you? Yes, very good, thank you. Very good. Excited to be on the show. Yeah, good stuff. What's been going on your end? Well, I had a hair transplant recently, so I've... Um, <laughs> Brilliant. I've, if anyone's wondering why I'm looking like Grant Mitchell at the moment, um, it will <laughs> grow back, um, but it'll take a few months. But yeah, um, so I was in Turkey the other week and then, yeah, just enjoying the racing, enjoying all the sports. It's been fantastic recently, so yeah. Good stuff. Well, you're going to look very different in a couple of months. I'm quite impressed. That's It takes so a, a bit a serious, of... Um... Serious job, yeah. I think this is a great advert for getting one done, to be honest, because... Well, we're going to be able I... to watch the progress throughout, yeah, throughout the Fridays. So. I'm, I personally, I've flirted with the idea at, at some point. I hide, I hide my hairline quite well. But um, <laughs> it, and now I've got the sort of knowledge that it could be an avenue worth exploring. Mm. Thanks for that, Tom. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> well, good stuff. You can trim your hair and Tom can grow his. And exactly. uh, like I say, we can... Did you bring me some flapjack from last week? You're off to make it. Do you know what? It, it, I finished the last piece last night. I'm so sorry. I don't think you'd have enjoyed it that much, Em, to be honest. It was, there wasn't much. It was all natural sugars. Mm. I actually, one of my flatmates, um, well, my, my only flatmate, he had a bite. He could only eat half of it. He said it wasn't sweet enough. So I've obviously got a bit to learn. <laughs> well, we'll pause on that thought. How would you like 50% off your first three months of Members Club? Well, here's how. Are you ready to take your passion for horse racing to the next level? With Racing Post Members Club, you gain exclusive access to the best racing insights, analysis and tools. Immerse yourself in award-winning content from interviews with the sport's biggest stars to race previews and behind-the-scenes features. Get the inside track with early access to the Racing Post digital newspaper from 9pm in the evening and daily selections from our expert tipsters. Racing Post Members Club is your ultimate ticket to the thrilling world of racing. Subscribe today and pay just £9.99 per month for the first two months with the code SUMMER. See the link in the video description for more information. Terms apply. Delighted to welcome Rafe Beckett onto the programme. Rafe, I know it's a very, very busy time of year. It's much appreciated. How are you? Very well, thanks, Emma. So, go on, I saw you at the sales last week, book one, and it's, it is buying time, uh, whilst training plenty of winners as well. How do you feel book one went for you? Did you, did you buy plenty? We did. We were busy, and uh, we got through... Um, we didn't get everything we wanted, but uh, we managed to buy plenty of horses. So, good. All good, Emma. Quick word, we've got to start by asking about Westover. Sad and frustrating news, he's been a brilliant racehorse. Yeah, he is sad because, um, you know, he's, uh, he's been a terrific servant. We got the rub of the green on a couple of occasions. It, it might have, his career might have been very different, notably in the derby, and, you know, having gone so close in the King George. Um, but uh, it's been great fun. We, Jug Mont, were, uh, have been, made it very easy for me to campaign him just as we want to. I don't, I don't think we left anything behind in any sense. No. Sadly, you just met an extremely good one in the arc. <laughs> yeah, and and in the Shima Classic, and uh, Ukum was definitely on his day in July as well. So it's just that that's the way it goes sometimes. And one one is one of the racing bones. Post journalists points out that we've had nine seconds in Group One this year, and that uh, that's uh, frustrating. But uh, it's nice to be competing at the top level as well. 
Alongside those nine seconds in Group 1s, 116 winners, 22% strike rates um, throughout the year, and 116 more than you've ever trained before. So from that point of view, it's been a, a fabulous season. It has, yes. We've had a lot of two-year-old winners as well, and we've had winners of nearly all the big festivals. So it's been a terrific, uh, it's been a terrific year, uh, and we've enjoyed it thoroughly. I was going to ask you about a couple of horses, uh, future stars possibly. Task Force, um, let's talk about him. He ran very well when finishing second in the, in the middle park. Doesn't have an entry in the Guineas. He's got one in the Irish Guineas. What are your thoughts on him for the future? Well, the Guineas doesn't close until February or March, so he'll yeah. certainly have an entry in that. I, I think he's, he's a miler in the making. But as you saw at, uh, in the middle park, Emma, he's a little keen early and he's a little inclined to get on his bike. That's just his nap. His his way, and uh, as he gets older and more mature, he'll grow out of that. He's still very much a uh, horse in, in in development, both mentally and physically. So I I am not inclined to run him again. He's not in the universe. I don't think that uh, I think that may save save us the decision. I wasn't keen on the Tewhurst really, and, and certainly not having won the Ripon Champion Tewhurst or Trophy. Uh, so he's, he's all going forward, certainly, and uh, we'll look forward to him in the spring. Champions Day is not far away. We'll, we'll spin through just a couple of them, but blue stocking in, in the Phillies and Mares, who ran really well at Chester last time. Yeah, track didn't really suit her, Emma. She, she uh, hit the front and then sort of got worried out of it by a hardy old campaigner. I think, uh, you know, obviously she's already run, run well at Ascot. She'll probably go there, certainly if the ground is, is good or slower, or she could wait for the St. Simon stake uh, a week later. It'll depend on ground, probably, but she's in good shape. Just a bit frustrating not to have won with her this year. She's gone close a number of times, and um, notably in the Irish Oaks. So we'll, uh, you know, be, I, we'd be quite keen to get ahead in front, but um, Asker suits her, as, as does Newbury, and we'll pick between the two. Speaking of frustrations, I'm sure you were just that with with Kin Ross in the foray last time. He didn't travel as well as he as as well as he normally does, and that is what got got him beaten as much as, much as anything else. And it, I think you know there'll be a few horses who came out of not just Westover, but there'll be a few horses who who, who come out of uh, Sunday last Sunday at Longchamp a bit sore. He won't uh, Westover won't be the only one. And luckily, Kinross is, is sound and uh, moved very well this morning. And so uh, we'll think about Ascot if it rains uh, and if the ground is on the easy side. If not, he'll wait for the Breeders' Club mile. Sonny Liston in the Van Balmoral. <laughs> <laughs> he really deserves a big one, doesn't he, this horse? You couldn't script it. Drawn on the wrong side in the Hunt Cup. Ryan got his stick muddled up in his, in his reins last time. He does like Ascot, and hopefully it might just come together for him here. Yeah, I, I couldn't, I mean, couldn't believe it got being that the Donkster could be beaten by Chelsea Thoroughbred's other horse in the Hunt Cup. Drawn on the other side. Uh, Ryan was actually was keen to ride Jimmy Hendrix in the Hunt Cup. It was me who put him on on uh, Tony Leston. So you couldn't script it. Uh, he went up four pounds for for for, for Doncaster. Um, so it's going to be tougher in the Balmoral, but he's in rare form, and uh, it's definitely his turn. So hopefully we can get it done. Okay, more immediately tomorrow. Let's start with Ascot. Biggles in the two thirty-five. Has got good course and distance form because was second in the Victoria Cup back in May. Yeah, he likes it there very much. So uh, didn't really work out for him last time. Uh, he, he ran there, but uh, he asked it suits him. Big field suits him. A small field at, at, uh, at Newbury. He was drawn on the wing. And he didn't really get enough cover to go through with it. He, he likes running between horses, as we saw in the Bunbury Cup. So yeah, uh, he's in good shape tomorrow, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully. There's another day in him. It was uh, it was a great day on the on the July course for his for his owner, Breed and Lady Cobham, uh, and uh, hopefully he's got another one in him this this horse. Ten past four at Ascot. I thought Nagiri's got a big shout. She's been very progressive and ran a a really good race to finish second in the Group Three. She's top rated here. Yeah, I think um, she's becoming more and more uh, 
I mean, she's obviously been extremely consistent, come a long way from bursting a blood vessel at Chelmsford in May. <laughs> um, and uh, I think either straight seven at after the distance at after, I should say, will suit her really well. She gets a mile well. We might we might sit a bit handier tomorrow than we have been. Um, but she, and she's in really good shape. So I'm hopeful that uh, we can get some, we can get a, a stakes win next to her name tomorrow probably, probably going to stay in training for as well as a four-year-old and uh most of us size stop get better with age i hope she's uh in that camp too yeah let's hope so and then it's at newmarket in the 130 the phillies handicap lady bobber who um won a maiden philly stakes at foss last time foss last i should say last time what can you sort of share any <laughs> any light and thoughts on her She's a very Philly is a very good is a very good page. You know, she's a very she's very well related Philly. It hasn't been easy with her. She's not she's she's been a little I wouldn't say fragile, but certainly immature. It's taken she hasn't taken her racing particularly well, which is why it's been a while since she last ran. Uh, dropping back to a mile court, I don't think that's a problem. She shows plenty of speed. Uh, she's a Philly who will also stay in training next next year, like Nagiri by Lopa de Vega. She should improve from three to four, and uh, the, 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 the mile and a quarter tomorrow should suit her really well. It will be the quickest crowd she's run on, but I think she's ready for it now. Uh, I hope that she'll go pretty close based on her work last week. Brilliant, Rafe. Thanks very much. A busy time of year. All the best for the rest of the season, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Brilliant to get uh, Rafe Beckett on the programme. He has had a phenomenal year, hasn't he? Oh, amazing year, yeah. I mean, Westover has been one of my favourite horses in training, so obviously quite gutted to hear about that. I thought it was a massive run in the arc behind uh, one of the best horses we've seen in quite a few years. But yeah, Rafe's uh, team obviously do exceptionally well at this time of year, so it's worth, worth listening to every word he says very closely. Mm, yeah, he's um, getting more and more ammunition uh, by the day, and he really is... Uh, one of the uh, the top trainers in the country. Well, let's get stuck into the action. We're going to start off with the 225, the Cumberland Lodge Stakes at Ascot. It's a Group 3 over a mile, three and a half. Let's have a look at how they price these up. Al Arsi, it's not a surprise, is a 6-4 to four favourite. Isra, 7-2. to two. Al Karim at 4-1, to one, and it's 17-2. to, two, 17 to two. Bar these. Tom, I'm going to start with you here, and it's, it's, as I said, not a surprise at all to see him being quite so short. Yeah, uh, he's a funny one, isn't he, Arsi? Um, he provides betting headache after betting headache every time he runs. Um, the problem is he's usually the best horse in the race in terms of talent. Um, could you ever trust Al Arsi with your hard-earned money? Probably not. Um, I think there's two players here. You either trust Al Arsi, more importantly Jim Crowley, who delivered him to absolute perfection last time. Um, and he has looked a little bit more professional in his last couple of runs. Um, or you leave the race alone. I just think that he looks, he, he is the most talented in the race. And I just don't think you can bank on him bombing out. Um, I, I wouldn't want to lay him at 13 to 8. I'd rather be on his side. I'd probably leave the race alone. But if I was having a bet, it would be Al Arsi. I think I just, he's just got, he's, I love him. I think he's, uh, horse racing is much better for characters like these but um he's a little bit untrustworthy I, I i think if we see it again three runs in a row then maybe next time um i'd be a little bit more confident but that said i'm, I'm not keen on taking him on either so it is al Arsi for me yeah just about robbie i think you're going to take him on aren't you uh i actually put him up at the start of the week at oh. five, five to one um well when i when i Did wrote... you get on at five to one uh no when i wrote the email he was fives but by the time it actually got sent, he was threes. I only got threes. But I also put up his right sixes. So that's an all right position. And that's a, probably an advert for the anti-postman email because Hamish was a short price favourite in this. He was never going to run at the start of the week. But I'd say Al Arzi has actually um, all of a sudden become quite consistent. That was always, we always knew he had loads of ability, but he was obviously quite complicated. Um, that Leopardstown run last time behind the Irish Derby run up Adelaide River. Uh, I think that was excellent, really. He came from a hell of a long way back. He was given a little too much to do. He just seems to be thriving all of a sudden. And um, I think he's probably going to be good enough. But if not, I mean, Al Karim is quite interesting on the back of his Chester victory over 
of a race blue stocking. Um, I worry if the ground might be, be a bit too quick for him. So I just think <coughs> it is between him and Isra. Uh, we know Isra, obviously, he's a fast ground group too. When he sent Adeo into retirement, I know Adeo wasn't himself that day. But, um, what did he make of his run at Kempton last time? Yeah, I think he's probably entitled to need it. He, he'd had a few few months off. He was he was given five pounds to to Bay Bridge. Mm, I mean, sure. I just I, I think he's th there's still a lot to like, and um, this kind of one mile four on a stiff track, fast ground is probably his perfect conditions. So I'd very much have it between those two. Uh, I'll give a shout to Claymore as well because he's obviously got really good Ascot form on fast ground. He's just had a hell of a lot to, a long time off. And he uh, he bled when he was last seen four months ago. So, but if the money comes from him, he'd also be interesting. But for me, it's a two horse race between the two Shadwell ones. Okay. Well, we're going to go north now and uh, go to Red Car's big race of the year. It's always well supported. This two forty five. Um, it's a decent listed contest for two year olds, and this is how they bet here. We have a short price favourite in the sh in the shape of Dragon Leader. Wow, two to five. Um, and nine to two bar, that's short, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's that short because about half an hour ago, Killian came out. come out. Killian was the, the clear second favourite. Yeah. Um, that's obviously making his life much easier, isn't it? Uh, it is going to rain at red car. It's good ground at the moment. It could be good soft, but he sort of alleviated any ground concerns with his run at Doncaster behind room service on soft ground over the, the six and a half there. Um, just think he's the best horse in the race. He's miles clear on the... On the, on the figures, he's getting weight from his, his biggest rivals. So I think it's probably going to be a case of Dragon Leader wins this quite closely. Mm, I was actually quite keen to take him on with oh, Killian. Yeah. Shame ah. that, um, that he's not going to run. Tom, what did you make of this? Yeah, I'm not far from Redco. I'm about half an hour drive. So it, I think the rain, it's not raining yet, um, but it is due to come, I think, and it's, it's going to be quite heavy. So um, how much they get of that um, will make things different, I think, but I'm in the Dragon Leader camp, uh, just, it, it's a it's a tricky race, as you said, Killian, he had the kind of talent to take on, but all the turns in Dragon Leader's favour here, um, he's looked really good, at, he was really good at York, and he lost nothing in defeat at Doncaster, I'm going to be back him at 2-5, to five. Um, probably not, if you're looking for something each way, it the action point, similar kind of profile to Killian, Drops back in class. Um, he's up against it at the weights, but yeah, I think he's been running group twos and group threes, so drop back to, I think, like Killian, he's a listed winner previously. So he might just find himself picking up a little bit in this kind of company um, at each way price. Archie Watson loves these two-year-old races, so I would expect a, a decent run from him if you wanted to take on the favourite. Well, the three o'clock from Ascot is up next. It is a group three. It's the John Guest Stakes. And this is a, a little bit more open, but it's an interesting contenders here. I like Kamachi Falls just as a horse full stop. So consistent. And uh, he is the three to one favourite. Anuf at nine to two. Joan Lapin at six to one. Garris at 13 to two. And it's seven to one bar. We'll start with Kamachi Falls. Um, very consistent, very solid. A listed winner at York last time and probably warrants his place at the top of the market, do you think? Yeah, he, he deserves to be favourite. He's got the three pound penalty against some interesting horses. Mm. Um, but I, I would be looking to take him on. He's had quite a, quite a hard season. Um, I mean, he obviously could win. He's gone well at Ascot in the past, but I think this is actually quite a deep field. Um, I think Pink Crystal is quite interesting at 12 <coughs> to 1. Uh, she won what I thought was a really good listed race at Air last time. Uh, beating some some really well, it, it looked more like a, a group three sort of on the verge of group two uh, race, and she came from quite far back. She's definitely going to be suited by six furlongs on a stiff track like Ascot for William Haggis, and I like horses who haven't stood too much racing by this time of year. She only run three times. Uh, the other one is a uh, Dart Trooper, um, sort of come from nowhere to be a proper group performer. Uh, started his winning sequence off mark of 83 in July, but just his form just keeps working out. He's won two courses and handicaps last time. The, the second one off top weight, uh, he was by far the best horse in that race. He was the only horse to come from, from the rear. The rest of the sort of second, third and fourth home were ridden close to the pace. And uh, I, I think he's, he's actually banged there on what he's achieved. So there too. But um, when you look at all the runners, there, there's probably possibly eight or nine potential winners in this. It's, it's that open. <laughs> Tom, can you shed a bit of light on this? <laughs> I really like Comanche Falls here. Um, I was so impressed with his win at York. I, I, I'm surprised they didn't give him an entry for the um, champion sprint, to be honest. Um, like, I think he's 
he's in the form of his life. I mean, I know he, he's danced every dance, really, but um, I just think he's he's absolutely thriving. Like He was beaten at the Curra a couple of starts ago, but like, nothing happened to, in that race to help him. Like, everything, the, the order didn't change from start to finish. He needs a decent pace to run out. He takes a little bit of getting going and he just couldn't, couldn't get there. But Yorkie, I just thought he was absolutely brilliant. As long as he gets a decent pace here, um, he's going to light the ground. I, I just, I'd be, I'd be disappointed if he doesn't win. I, I think there is a little bit of depth in there, but I just have Comanche falls a little bit ahead of these. And um, yeah, I think he's, he's on the verge of being a Group One performer at this level. I don't, I don't think he's that far behind the, the best six, six furlong horses when he's at his best. Um, and he certainly looks at his best. I know, I know what Robbie's saying about him having a hard season, but he seems to thrive on his racing. And I just think that. Um, until he shows signs that he's he's regressing, um, to me, he's the one to beat here. I, I'm quite keen on him, actually. Yeah, no, I agree. I think he's the one they've all got to beat. And um, wow, he's tough and consistent and still here in the form of his life. The feature race of the day is undoubtedly at Newmarket, and that is the Group 1 Sun Chariot Stakes in Spiral. He is likely to be a fairly short-priced favourite. Indeed, she is the 10 to 11 favourite um, we've then got the French filly, who's quite interesting, Marquet de Sevenay, second best at to 4-1, to Meditate, in and out, to performer of Aidan O'Brien's at 15-2, to two, and it's 10-1 to one bar. Tom, let's start with you, in Spiral, undoubtedly extremely talented, but can throw in the odd poor race, can't she? Yeah, she's got a funny habit as well of not backing up performances. She kind of clocks one. And her next start is usually at least £10 below that. Now, that could be a coincidence. She's had a little bit more of a layoff this time. Um, but she's got to be taken on, I think, at, at 10 to 11. Um, like she, Obviously, it's easy to say after the race, but she probably was a really good bet at, in France when she, she's won because she was 6, 7, 8 to 1. Um, I just think when she's this price... She's just a little bit untrustworthy, and it's not. She doesn't throw in absolute stinkers like always. It's just <clears throat> he's five, six, seven, eight pound below best, and she's going to have to run right up to her, her mark here because the French filly Marquise de Sevigne, I think, is top top class. Um, really, really like to win last time. Beat a very good filly in Via Sestina. She doesn't win a races by far, um, but she always looks like winning. I think she won by nose last time, but she. You just got the impression she was always going to get there. Um, travels really well for her races. Um, <coughs> port and turn of foot. And she's at a price, actually, where there's eight runners here. You could even back her each way at four to one. Um, I just think she's an absolute cast iron certainty to be in the top three, in my opinion. And I think she's got a real chance against Inspira. I, I think their form, even at their best, is right up there with each other. Um, and Inspiral, you've got to take into account her... Uh, a kind of habit of running. I think their RPRs have gone one, two, three, then one, one, two, one, one, eight, one, oh, six, one, one, nine, one, oh, one. She clocked one, two, two last time. So if you're going off her form since she's a two year old, she's likely to throw in a little bit below par. Um, if she's below par, she won't beat the French filly. Um, I think she's a great bet here at four to one. So it's Marquise de Sevigny. I love saying that name. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's that. It's Marquise de Sevigny for me. It's odd word to say, isn't it? Go on. I mean, you had a good How attempt, do you pronounce it? Maxi de Savan. No, what? Savan. <laughs> Maxi? Maxi. It's not that. What is it then? It's Marquis, it. Marquis de Sevigny. How Marquis, did you say it again, Tom? It? What, what about Mar the S? Marquis de Sevigny, no? Yeah, it was an S. We listened there, to it back on the, on, the, on the recordings. I feel like you're <laughs> overruled. Well, I, I think it should sound like that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I totally agree with Inspiral. Why don't you just she, call her the French filly for, yeah, for the I'll sake do, of it? keeping it one. simple here? Inspiral's a bit like this and then this and then this and then this. Mm. And she, she's come off back of that. So, so you I'm think thinking she's, she's going to do that. Because the last time she also ran on fast ground, she was beating at 1-7 at Newmarket in the Falmouth. Um, I know there's different courses there. But you've just got to be taken on if she's odds on. Uh, I get what Parky's saying about the French filly. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> He didn't, Parky didn't mention the ground. I'd be slightly worried about that for her. She's done a, one of group ones on very testing conditions. This is different. I didn't actually think she was. right testing, I don't think, Robbie. Because you know Scott Burton made a very good point to me that French 
when you look at the French form, they read it completely different. They use a completely mm. different um, way of measurement. So yeah. soft ground there is actually like good to soft at worst, sometimes even good yeah. ground. Um, right. There's nothing in a pedigree personally that suggests it. So, but yeah, I just yeah. think that's something that people should be aware of the French when you're reading through form and you look at the French. I wasn't aware of it until Scott told me. It is quite a good point, isn't it? Because the arc was run on good to soft, but I mean, everyone's talking about that basically being good to firm. Um, she is a daughter of Siuni. Some of his horses obviously go on quick ground. I mean, obviously Paddington, Paddington has this year. But I don't know. Um, I think Heredia is just too big a price, to be honest. I think she's the horse that's really improving in this field. Mm. Um, sort of started the season as a sprinter, but she's sort of turned inside out as a miler in the last couple of starts. Um, her last run in the Atalanta Stakes is working out really well. Um, the three the horses she beat filled the first four places at Newmarket in the Rosemary Stakes last time. She was by far the best that day. She had the toughest trip. The race was slowly run, and she did it quite easily. Uh, her connections have paid 20 grand to get her in, involved in this, and uh, I think she's absolutely dead on for the first three. And if Maxi de Savan doesn't like the conditions... <laughs> Maxi de Savan. <laughs> There's not a horse running in this race called that. Or uh, even the resemblance. Whatever resembles her name is. That. Well, well, she's certainly not Marky. She's got an S in her name. <sighs> we'll, if, agree, we'll agree to disagree. But, but the bottom line is, I think Heredia is finally positioned to capitalise if the French V doesn't like the ground and Spiral does one of uh, those. Mm. Okay. Well, what about the 3.35 at Ascot, um, the seven furlong heritage handicap? And because of that, Betfred are offering five places. Let's have a little look at how they bet, what's heading the market. And Baradar is at 11 to 2. Popmaster at 6 to 1. Fresh at 13 to 2. Quinault, 15 to 2. And it's 10 to 1 bar. Robbie, take it away. What do yeah, you fancy? Love, love Fresh. I love Fresh. Uh, he loves Ascot as well. Form figures of... 05001194321 in uh, six and seven furlong handicaps at Ascot and 16 plus runner fields. And in plenty of those, he's been drawn the wrong side. So he obviously loves it here. He's come down to a very workable rating despite running well this season in recent starts. He's down to 99. That's his lowest mark since he won the international stakes here over the course and distance last season. Uh, James Fanshaw's left him in the Group 1 sprint on Champions Day in two weeks' time. He's going to have to be winning that, or certainly going very close to be even considering running there. And I just think that he's just on a better mark than the other progressive horses uh, that head the betting. The likes of Baradar, Quinault, Potmaster. I just wonder if the handicap might have quite with them, but we know Fresh on his day is a fair bit better been than 99. Amazing. Amazing, yeah. So I mean, seven of its last eight starts. He's going to climb £43 in the ratings. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does from his draw in one because in this race, sometimes they split into three or sometimes they go one side or the other. It's very hard to predict. So that's going to be quite important. But um, you, just, you just feel like the handicap is eventually going to catch Quinault. It might not be tomorrow, but I think either way, Fresh is going to be finishing the first five. We're getting for five places, so that'll do me. OK, it's all about Fresh for Robbie. Um, Tom, any take on this? I agree with Robbie um, in the sense that I think you've got to expect the handicap to catch up with these eventually. Um, I think the form is absolutely to to look the form to look at is absolutely through Quino and Baradar and and Potmaster. Um, but like Quinault's up another five pounds. Um, amazingly, start of the season off fifty nine. Like that's incredible, really. Baradar. A couple of starts ago, it, it won at Ascot on similar ground to this. Now, it's a big drifter that day. Um, I just wonder whether he got away with the ground because he had a little bit in hand. He's up another £9 for that. Um, the horse who ties in with, with all of these is Hickory. Um, he has a £7 swing with with um, with, with Quino, Um And I just think that... Look, he was behind Quino and Potmaster couple of starts ago. Quinnell's up £8, Potmaster's up 6 Hickory gets in off the same mark. Um, I just think you can trust the form because Potmaster's beat 113 rated horse in a listed race next time out. He's due to go up to 109. He rests up 96 that day, so he's up £13. So that makes Hickory really, really well handicapped. He's been knocking on the door in these. I think he's finished second and third on his last two starts of this course and distance. Um, He's surely got a massive chance at the weights. Um, I think uh, Robbie points out the draw. He's drawn two. 
it's a little bit on the extreme. You can, I feel a little bit more comfortable when in, when they're in the middle. There is only eighteen runners though, um, which is not a lot for a handicap like this. Um, you look earlier in the season, you're in the high twenties for this kind of race, so it might not mean that there's as much of a draw bias. I just think he's got. A, I think he looks really well handicapped here off eighty nine. Um, I think he's got a big big chance, Hickory. I do agree. Um... Do agree with that? Because I, 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 I thought he was running on Friday, but he's he's literally just been pulled out of that, hasn't he? So they're yeah, obviously yeah. going for it. Um, pulled he, out. He Saturday. is. I think he'd probably be my second choice as well, to be honest. I, I just sort of didn't really consider him because I thought he was definitely going to run on on Friday. But he is drawn right next door to Quinnot, and that could be an advantage. So, yeah, Fanshawe could have a pretty uh, pretty strong hand there. Well, before we get stuck into our weekend naps, go check out racingpost.com forward slash free bets to see how you may be able to get £500 of free bets. So, Tom... Best bet of the weekend? My best, just because I really like saying her name, she just edges it from Comanche Falls. My nap is Marquise de Sevigny. Not um, even said it correctly. In new market. Yeah, if only. <laughs> She'll win, though. She'll win. Love it. Robbie? I don't think she will, but good luck to you. Um, for me, I'm going to the 445 at Ascot uh, on the last race on the card, Harry Brown. Um, this horse. He won his side in the Palace of Holyrood House on uh, Royal Ascot on the 500 handicap there. But he's, he's not refound that form since. He's had a couple of excuses. Uh, he raced at Ascot again the following month on ground that was a little bit too slow for him from four pounds out of the weights. Uh, you can draw a line through that. And then he's had a bit of, he's had a couple of months off. He came back <coughs> at Haydock last month. And uh, a horse just basically almost wiped him out of the start. You can completely draw a line through that. He's been dropped two pounds for that, surprisingly. So I think he's on a really good mark, Harry Brown, and you should be getting a nice each-way price there. OK, I'm going to go Nagiri in the 10 past four at Ascot. Very progressive filly, trained by uh, Rafe Beckett. Uh, she's top rated here. Um, she was second in a group three at Doncaster last time. She's actually in by my brother. And uh, I think she'll take all the beating and cap what's been a fabulous season for Rafe Beckett. Plans for the weekend? Tommy, you up to much or are you staying in with the new hair growth? Uh, no, I'm at the Sunderland match tomorrow, um, playing middles for a little bit of a derby. Oh. Um, so yeah, that'll be good. And then, um, yeah, just I'll probably get back to watch them at the end of the racing because it's early kickoff. So um, yeah, it'll be a quiet one after that. I think there's a bit of decorating in store. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think like a few jobs at the well, weekend. The Sunderland question for you: How's uh, Mason B Burstow getting on there? Because we've obviously loaned him out. To you yeah, boys. doesn't score enough goals, but no. um, he's he's got a good player, but needs to start scoring goals. That's a problem. The whole point of a striker. It's a problem we've got as well. Who do you support? I should know. Chelsea boy. Oh, Chelsea boy. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Okay. Not seeing my Chelsea cup in here, no? No. I Chelsea, feel like you've never dressed well. in a Chelsea shirt. Well, it'd be inappropriate, wouldn't it, Em? This is a studio for professional Well, I've attire. seen you wear some sort of shorts and flowery shirts. Oh, yeah, back shirts in the day, I, I was allowed to wear t shirts, but producer Dave Lowe changed that about four or five months ago. <laughs> Did he? Um, well, up the dress code, I hadn't noticed. Yeah, but, well, sorry. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's a nice fleece from ASOS. Um, <laughs> What am I doing this weekend, I hear you ask. Uh, I hear you ask. That hair's coming off for well, sure. Well, I think you can tell I've got nothing planned because this barnet is still intact. <laughs> It'll be a case of sitting on the sofa, watching the sport, going to the gym, sitting in the steam room, relaxing. Yourself? Quite a quiet weekend. I've had a crazy busy week. And then it's, um, it's been book one at the sales. I was at Horse of the Year show yesterday. And it's book two next week at Newmarket. So, um yeah, I'll be there nice. trying get, to find some, the next champion. Getting some stuff for the Chelsea uh, Thoroughbreds. That's it. Wow. That's it. Exciting times. Well, as always, Tom and Robbie, it's been an absolute pleasure. We'll see you again next Friday.